Rated M for Mature. Welcome to the second edition of Playing Dead. I'm Major Locasio, and in this episode, we'll be discussing how exactly Telltale's working on expanding Robert Kirkman's Walking Dead universe with a brand new story and brand new characters. We're also going to be talking about choice in the game and how it will give players what Telltale is calling a tailored experience. To help us discuss this, I'll be talking once again to Sean Vanneman, lead designer, and Gary Witta, writer of Episode 4 and story consultant for Walking Dead the Game. So stay with us as we learn more about Walking Dead right here on Playing Dead. So welcome guys, thank you for being here. Thanks a lot, awesome. So Gary, you've done a lot of, uh, you've done Hollywood movies, you've done Gears of War. What brought you here to Telltale? Um, well yeah, so I mean traditionally I, I came from the video game world initially. I was the editor in chief of PC Gamer for many years and then I segued into kind of writing story and narrative stuff of video games and then uh, worked in Hollywood for a while and had done some movies. And so when something like this came along, this is kind of the perfect project for me. And uh, you know, it's, it's games, I love video games. Uh, I love to write screenwriting, screenplays, that kind of stuff, and I love The Walking Dead, so this was kind of a perfect perfect storm of, of awesome stuff for me. One of your projects, one of your past projects, is Book of Eli with Denzel Washington right. and Gary Oldman, That's and right. there, there's sort of this, obviously, a post-apocalyptic theme between Walking Dead and Book of Eli. What do you think is the appeal? Why do we keep seeing these stories come up again? The end of the world type scenarios and disaster type situations are like crucibles that kind of burn away all the trivia and all the, the, the conveniences of modern life and force people, they, people are revealed for who they really are. Why has The Walking Dead sort of become so much more of a bigger icon than, than other zombie stories to think, you? It's, it's, a, it's a really good question because I actually think there's almost a little bit of zombie fatigue out there. Everyone these days is talking about the zombie apocalypse and it's become kind of a fun thing. And right. I, get a little, I see it on the internet all the time, I'm, I'm almost a little bit tired of it. Um, but I make an exception for The Walking Dead because I really believe that like the two main central pillars of like zombie mythology, like the two old school things that can, can say we were there at the beginning is the Romero zombie mythology right. and this. So Sean, you sort of are responsible for the whole, uh, for the story itself, right? Uh, myself and Jake Rodkin and Dave Grossman and, and all the guys here uh, kind of sat down early. You credit. <laughs> Just you. I'm only asking all about by you. myself. Uh, I mean, we sat down actually like not like in this very room and uh, in the early days and just started putting down what we thought was an interesting story inside this world. Like the, there was a first pitch to Robert where it said, this is where we want to go. And it was awesome. And that was like, and <laughs> then you start to build off of that. You know, there's, we have an incredible amount of creative ownership at Telltale, which is like unheard of. It's awesome. How exactly do you guys connect what you're doing to Walking Dead? How do you make it feel? like the comics. A lot of intangibles, you know, I mean, there's the practical stuff. Is this is all taking place in and around Atlanta and Macon, Georgia, and like there is the presence of the South and the forest and, you know, the zombie, everything looks and feels like The Walking Dead. Um, and obviously Glenn is in the game and we've talked, you know, about uh, the characters that should come uh, in and out of the book uh, into, the sh into the game. And like if you were to make a Walking Dead game where people didn't like try to connect with each other on a personal level, and if you try to make a game where if you said something to somebody, it didn't matter, um, you wouldn't be making the Walking Dead game. So for the for the Walking Dead game, you guys have a new lead character, correct? This is Lee. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, so we don't have Rick, obviously, as the main guy. How exactly do you make a Walking Dead character, a main character, uh, feel like Walking Dead without having Rick? There's a lot of bad characters in in the Walking Dead, and so you need to have or, or characters where you don't know where you stand with them. And, and with with Rick, and with our character Lee, I think you want to have the, the same sense that this is someone that you would want on your side, that you would want in your group. He's the hero, he's the protagonist, he has all the qualities. The same qualities you associate with Rick, you'll associate with Lee. Having said that, beyond that, they're actually pretty different characters. Lee yeah. actually has a pretty dark origin story. When the world collapses, Rick is a police officer and the world recognizes, it, recognizes him as good. And then that is in contrast with the rest of the story where you start to wonder if he's bad. You know, when he starts to like make decisions that are selfish and built you know out of fear and that are violent and you start to wonder like oh is this a bad guy you know but you're with him and you know and you empathize still which is pretty amazing right and then um lee at the beginning of the game um you discover that he has been convicted of murder so the world has told him he's bad you know and now this bad like and now like how does that fit as he tries to figure out if he's good or not or you try to figure out as the player if he's good or not um, and what the heck does good or bad mean to you as a player? And that was the stuff that was really interesting to me. And then when we latched onto that, 
we kind of just kept going. Telltale said that there's a choice mechanic throughout the game that allows the player a tailored experience. Can you explain what exactly does that mean? Well, like, if you play an adventure game, like, a lot of times you're going around, like, sort of an information gathering mode, and you get dialogue trees, and you go down them, and you find, you know, information you need, and then you go off and you do a thing. And uh, those are great. And, like, I love making and playing games that do that. <laughs> and uh, something going into the game um, that I... Th knew I wanted to do early on and that uh, Jake and I talked about and then uh, pitched to Dan and Kevin was like we don't want to go back up the tree like when you make a choice we're just going to keep going you know and sometimes those choices are just going to be like little things and other times it's going to be a little bigger thing and other times it's going to be really huge and uh, on the dialogue level that was really interesting to me because the UI and the presentation is all the same you're still just a human being communicating but sometimes you say something to somebody in real life that you can't take back and it ruins your life for you know a good chunk of time. Other I know times, how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that happens in the comics, and that's something that we can do in games. And I thought was really and we've been sort of building to that as a studio. Other times, you know, you have like large scale choices where you're getting a different set, you're meeting a different character, and that's something that's really cool. We've never done before. You know, some we've said this before, but sometimes you're making a choice and somebody lives and somebody dies, and that's also, like, we've never done that before, and that's really exciting. And sometimes it can be the most innocuous thing. There's a moment um, early in the game where uh, Clementine asks you, what do we do now? And it's like, you have two very sort of innocuous choices. It's obviously you guys need to get help, but how are you going to go about doing it? And it doesn't really seem, you know, like, do we want to do this now, or do we want to wait and do it you know, when it's dark? Like, that would make more sense. You know, you sort of look at it, and you only have so much time to really think about it. And then after you make that choice, like, the world that you're going to see in the, in the next scene is going to be completely different. You're going to meet a different character and have a different conflict and see a different side of Lee because of all that. Just because you decided, let's go out the door right now, or you know what, like, let's hunker down and wait and do this the right, and do this a different way. What I love about interactive storytelling, especially what these guys are doing, where it's so narratively and character focused, is I think the tailored analogy is actually a really good one, because they kind of feel like, so The Walking Dead, like any other comic book or any other TV show, is basically kind of an off-the-rack experience. They create one story that is the same for everyone who experiences it, and it may be to your taste or it may not be. What you get to do with a video game is, is kind of create your own experience. So it's kind of like the difference between buying a suit off the rack and having one tailored just to fit you, which is going to feel a lot better and you're going to like it a lot more. So this is the more bespoke storytelling <laughs> experience through the, through, the, through the choices that you make that the game is going to mold itself around you to suit, the, to suit the kind of story that you have created. In a way, this is going to sound kind of artsy, but in a way, the player becomes kind of like the last creative collaborator in the game. They put the final finishing touch on what the story they experience really is. And the game feels, to me, perhaps even more choice-driven than puzzle-driven. You've obviously mm -hmm. you've got to have Absolutely. puzzles, otherwise yeah. you could just kind of blast through all the choices. They've got to be things that hold the player up and force you to think to, to move on. But like a puzzle is kind of an intellectual challenge, right? It's a, it's a test of how smart you are, right. what's your ability to figure out logic, and mm -hmm. does this key go in this box? And that's fine, that's very interesting. Adventure games have survived like that for many, many years, and there are many great ones. What's interesting though about a choice instead of a puzzle is that it's an emotional test rather than an intellectual test. It's not about well, how high is your IQ, can you figure out this puzzle? It's like who are you really? What would you do in this situation? It's, it's much more illuminating in terms of forcing the player to think about what they would do in the shoes of that character, forced mm -hmm. to make some agonizing life or death. And I think, so I think that's much yeah. more interesting for the player. Obviously, you guys have to keep track of different decisions. How, how do you guys go about that? I mean, you clearly, write them all down. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, you write them all down, but it's got to be difficult from just from a story point of view. Uh, really hard, yeah. And I mean, we're in that right now. We're in that sort of like, look at all this stuff. Like... You know, there's columns across a spreadsheet that says, <laughs> does this just matter to this conversation? Does this matter to the next conversation? Does this matter in the scene? Does this matter across the episode? Does this matter across the season? Could it? When they gave me the script for episode one, which is like this, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Because every single permutation and version consequence of the way that the story can branch based on the decision, they all have to work. Not only do they all have to happen, they all have to make sense yeah. and work, and the game has to not break no matter what decision you make. And of course, you know, gameplay, people are going to try to break it. Like, they're going to 
try and make the worst possible decisions and, and have fun with it. And the game will, the game is robust yeah. enough to let you do that. But yeah, just by volume, like I, you know, when, when I'm editing a scene, I've got to edit that scene five different ways because there are so many different ways that scene can play out. Is there a right and wrong way to play the game? Is the goal to play the game, you know, correctly? There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. There is just your answer, and I think that's something that's really exciting. As long as your player has not been killed, you do. You basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you can die for sure. You know, just you know, don't die. Just don't but, die. Uh, so that's the right. There's not a ton of emphasis. <laughs> on, there's not a ton of emphasis on living or dying. From a challenge standpoint, that's interesting, but it's not, from a narrative standpoint, interesting because the story stops. So we just try to get you back on track, and then keep playing the game and making and you know informing your relationship with this I, character. I think there is some time there is some points in the game where we do ease up a little bit and give the player relatively easy choices. Like if you want to be a bit more of a of a bad guy character, this this is clearly the way to go. <laughs> yeah. If you want to be more sympathetic this way. But the majority I think play much more towards the middle. Mm -hmm. It's just like different shades of gray and again it's less about what is right or wrong and more about what well, what would you do? And you know, it may be right or wrong. It, right or wrong, it's your choice. And, and, and the time issue is actually really important as well. We should talk about that because the other thing that, that forces the, the agony of those decisions is not, it is not just the fact that decisions are difficult, but you do often have very little time. And there may be zombies beating down the door or someone is bleeding out and they're going to turn into a zombie. You may be locked in a room with them. There's a lot of there's people around you going, we have got to decide something now. So it's not like you, even if it's a tough decision, you don't get to go, hmm, let me think. About it. You've got to make a right. decision right now, a snap judgment. And it may be the wrong one, but you don't have the luxury of spending a lot of time thinking about it. So you're not going to be hindered for making a terrible decision. You just have to deal with the decision, correct? Is that I would say just experience the decision you made. I experience. think you'll have the most fun if that's what you're doing. It's like yeah, college. I yeah, yeah um, I, don't think the, the, I, I don't think the game... <laughs> these aren't consequences, these are experiences. These are experiences. <laughs> um, so I, I, don't, yeah, I don't agree with that. I was going to say, I don't think the game ever really punishes you in a gameplay way. No. Game, you're not, you're not going to screw yourself or, or box yourself into a corner because you made a certain decision, but you may have to live with the discomfort of what, what the story has become right, because totally. of the situation. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that's worth mentioning is the, the 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 replayability of it is really interesting as well because like if I were to say to you, here's a comic book, and you can read it now and put it down, but when you come back in a month and pick it up again and reread it, the pages will have somehow magically changed and it'll be a slightly different story. You think that is amazing. Well, that <laughs> exists. That's what this game is. You get to you get to put it down, play it again a slightly different way, and actually see a different story unfold. So that mm -hmm. you know th that's really interesting as well. And I think there is. Yeah. Enough branching that you could actually see a significantly different version of the story based on the choices you make. All right, well, thank you guys for talking to us That's today. Awesome, Always um, great. It was Good a here. pleasure having thank you, you here. Next time, we've got an episode that Walking Dead fans can't afford to miss. We're going to be talking to Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman, as well as showing the game in action for the very first time. Remember to email your questions to playingdead at telltalegames.com or call 707 701 DEAD and leave a message. Be sure to sign up for the official website or follow us on Facebook or Twitter to be the first one to find out when the next episode of Playing Dead goes live. Well, that's it for this episode, and we'll see you next time on Playing Dead.